we were starting to understand even at that point that something was going on mm-hmm. and that you know the world was changing and and really the energy of the galaxy con fans carried us through that weekend and yeah. has carried me through this year this is my third event with galaxy con this year and yeah. it's it's been something that I've looked forward to every time and has really lifted my spirits at important times in the last year. So thank you, all of you, thank you. Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of GalaxyCon Live where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. Today we are going back to Agrabah maybe taking a left turn at the Cave of Wonders. So let's go ahead and dive right into our introductions. Please first help me welcome writer, director, producer, DJ Tanner's boyfriend. He is the voice of Aladdin. Please help me welcome Scott Wanger. How are you doing, man? Good to see you. How's it going? It is It is going good. I, I can't complain on my end. How about, how about you? Uh, you um, the quarantine this past year been treating you have you uh have you learned any of the new banana bread recipes stuff like that no but my wife has she's an amazing banana bread maker (laughs) all i've done is is eat that's basically how i've spent the quarantine is eating her banana bread but Uh, um, quarantine 15 huh yeah exactly yeah exactly but this is my first time doing anything like this like a virtual convention it's really it's really cool it's uh you know, it's it's sad that we can't all be in person, but I, I love that we're we don't have to wear masks. Absolutely. And yeah, so next up, please help me welcome celebrated actress Disney Legend. You know her as the voice of Princess Jasmine. Ladies and gentlemen, Linda Larkin. Hi. Hi Linda. How are you? Hi, How are you? Where are you at right now? I'm in New York City. New York in- City. Yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful day here. It's quiet right now, but if it gets loud, I'm going to mute myself. So <laughs> just know if my voice drops out, it's because there's a motorcycle going by or a dog barking or something, but <laughs> I'll be here. Linda, I just got to say, uh, my sister uh, absolutely adores you. Princess Jasmine is her favorite princess ever. And I just want to say, you made Christmas really, really easy last year. <laughs> How did I do that? What did you? Oh, you, get uh, you, you signed her uh, an eight by ten that I uh, was able to gift her for for Christmas. So that was oh, um, so yeah. great. So super easy. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm glad she liked it. Absolutely. Our next guest. Uh, I mean. He's a, a puppeteer. Uh, he is an actor. He is a man of the stage. Please help me welcome the voice of Jafar, Jonathan Freeman. Hello. Hello. Uh, we were talking beforehand, before you had joined us, uh, Scott, Linda, and I, and he was talking about how he's starting to get that Anderson Cooper look. But Jonathan, you have knocked that out of the park. The Anderson Cooper look? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, that's a great compliment. Uh, no, Scott's got it sewn up. I just want to look like Scott. <laughs> Very kind. Um, <laughs> now it's the Scott Wenger look. The Scott Wenger that's right. look. That's Scott right. Wenger look, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I last, you know, hung out with you guys in Richmond a year ago. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, the yeah. time I left my house. <laughs> <laughs> That was, oh, was the last time we were all together. Yeah, absolutely. And we got to celebrate Gilbert's birthday together. That was great. That was so really unfortunately, great. he's not here, but you know who is? The voice of Razul and somebody who's in pretty much every single one of your favorite Disney movies. Please help me welcome Jim Cummings. Jim, how are you doing, man? And the crowd went mild. Uh, very good. Hi, everybody. Hey, <laughs> I like, I'm digging the hat. It's it's great to almost be here. Well, I am in Texas, you know. So there you go. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you much. Man, it's uh, it's great to be here with all of you guys. And uh, I know there's a, a ton of questions being written like feverishly for you. But I have a couple of my own that, we're, that I, I just have to get into. Uh, we discussed it a little bit before. 
but when you were auditioning for this role, do you guys remember it? Uh, does it stick out? Did you know you were auditioning for Disney? You know, I, I had no clue what I was auditioning for, thank God, because if I knew, I would have been so nervous, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten a call back. So they said, my agent said, oh, it's, uh, I said, what is it? They said, some cartoon. And so yep. maybe, I don't think they, I, I don't know if they were intentionally doing me a favor by not raising the stakes too high, but I went in there very relaxed because I didn't realize what I was, if I knew I was walking into the next 30 years of my life, it might've been a different experience. <laughs> Would have been so true. <laughs> Linda, do you remember like auditioning to be a Disney princess? I I remember it very specifically. I I was living on Riverside Drive in Los Angeles, and my friend picked me up to take me to the audition because she also had the audition. So we went together, and <laughs> well, she had she had a fancy <laughs> fax machine, so she'd gotten the signs the night before and she let me read them in the car on the way to the audition. So I if remember. Already on very very drive, that's pretty close. What did you say? It wasn't a big trip to the audition if it was you were already on Riverside. Yes, I was in North Hollywood. Where did we go? Burbank? Yeah, not too far. Not too far. It's an awkward, walking awkward car ride when you're both it. trying for the same position. You know, it, it's really funny. It was, it wasn't like that. Like everyone I knew was auditioning for everything. So we had a camaraderie really. We, we were all competing against each other, true, but we were really rooting for each other. And there was a lot of work. Everyone was getting the jobs that were meant for them, I think. You know, sometimes there'd be something really big that everyone wanted. Honestly, this one, wasn't it they didn't no one realized what we were auditioning for so wow. i i think that you know everyone was really happy for me when i got this cartoon no one really <laughs> thought it jonathan, was like as big as it turned out to be absolutely jonathan do you remember auditioning yes i do i mine my audition came in a very strange way i was i had been doing a very Two years prior to two years prior to my audition, I was doing a very challenging off Broadway musical with Nathan Lane and Reggie Cafe. It was called In a Pig's Valise, and it was cast by a wonderful guy named Albert Tavares. And Albert Tavares was the casting director of Aladdin. And it was the first time that I had played a villain on stage in New York City. And uh, thanks to Graziella Danielle. And um, so that's really how it happened for me. Uh, you know, it, it was because Albert brought me in. And I was grateful. What it, it was so exciting. It was very exciting. It still is. So did you know it was for Disney when you were brought in for that? I, I did. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I knew. And I had met Howard Ashman and uh, Alan Menken years before because I auditioned for the original production off-Broadway production of um, Little Shop of Horrors, which I did not get, but I had a terrific audition, and it was one of those appointments that don't happen that often where you walk out feeling good about yourself. <laughs> walk out, you know, beating yourself up. They were such gentlemen, and it was such an easy time, and they were so wonderful that I thought, gosh, I hope I get to work for them sometime, even if it's not for this, you know. 30 years Jim, later. Uh, this was, I guess, you know, you've been in so many classics now, but this was towards the beginning of that career. Do you remember auditioning for Disney and auditioning for this role? Yeah, yes, I do. I do. Um, you know, I'd known Ron and John, you know, uh, the, the producers uh, for a good while. And I remember, um, and I think sometimes I'm their cleanup guy. And, the, you know, it's like, well, who are we going to get? Oh, just get you. You know, and so <laughs> I'm like all purpose tool, I guess. And uh, I remember reading for it and they said, uh, well, here, you know what? Let's throw another couple at you. And, and I remember I almost cut off Princess Jasmine's arm so that I had that going for me. You know, when she stole my apple, you guys, I'm sure you remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It was actually kind of an unrewarding experience terrible, <laughs> because I, I really had my heart set on Princess Jasmine. I. <laughs> but apparently uh, they the wanted way, a real girl. 
That was oh. my audition scene, by the way, that marketplace scene. Oh, really? Yes. I, I think oh, just was, too. I think was it? Was, you know, like the, oh, I'm so glad you found her. I think that was my one of my scenes that I had. <laughs> now, unfortunately, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, you guys didn't provide the singing voices. Was that something you were looking forward to or dreading, knowing that how big of a musical number Disney animated films usually are well you know i i had auditioned a few years before this or maybe, i don't know maybe a year or two for this movie newsies which was another uh a oh, sure. movie, live action and i gave a great audition and they said that was great i could tell that i had nailed it they were like oh one question can you sing and i said no nah, not really and they said sorry and then a friend of mine got the part who couldn't really sing either and they just taught him how to sing so i learned a very valuable lesson which is if they ask you if you can do anything just say you can and figure it out later. So they said at the Aladdin audition, they said, can you sing? And I was like, well, you know, sure. And they gave me sheet music and a tape of Ellen, and, and, you know, singing the, the demo. And I practiced so much. I really tried my hardest, but boy, did I blow it. But you know what, I guess, but it kept me alive in the process. I think if I had said no, they would have given it immediately to, you know, they would have just, you know, said, well, sorry, so then would have been the newsy situation. But um, it would have been a whole new world for you. No, but seriously, folks, yeah, but exactly. the whole world for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, but, uh, you know, it, it, I, I gave it my best shot, but there was no competing with uh, the beautiful stylings of Brad Kane. Yeah. And Linda. what a perfect match, too. Yeah. yeah. Voices Linda, are you, so were you uh, looking together. forward to singing? So. I didn't have a song. And if Jasmine had a song at the beginning of this process, I would not have been considered. I, I wasn't a singer. It wasn't something that I could, you know, really even lean into. I just, it wasn't what I do. So I don't think I would have had the opportunity, but they wrote a song for Jasmine probably a year into me recording. So at that point, they asked me if I could sing. And I was like, like happy birthday or something. And they're like, no, like we're writing a song for Jasmine. And I was like, oh boy, that's it. That's the end of this job. <laughs> and because Scott and Brad was working out so well, they considered finding a voice to match mine. And, and Leia Salonga was hired and just knocked it out of the park. And it was also so seamless to hear my speaking voice going into her singing voice. I, I was like, I would never know. She almost had me convinced that I could sing. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty incredible what they were able to do. Absolutely. Are you guys ready for some fan questions? Oh, sure. yes. Sure. All right. Uh, so first, from Matthew, where would you go if you had a magic carpet? I would go anywhere. Just I haven't left. I haven't been anywhere in a year. I would. I would go to. I would go to Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, That's convenient. Oh, wow. I would go to Linda's house. Just for the record, I, I would. I would go visit. Her. <laughs> I would be so happy to have you here. You're always welcome at my house. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> Not I would go everywhere. <laughs> What'd you say, Jonathan? I'd say I, I'd pretty much go anywhere right now. Yeah. Yeah. Not any everywhere, like you said, actually. <laughs> I would go everywhere. Yes. Yeah. I I would have an itinerary for you by the end of this. <laughs> But for starters, I, I'd go visit each one of you. That, that would take, you know, uh, maybe how long would it take on the magic carpet? I guess it would Very be fast. Very <laughs> yeah. um, and then maybe I would go to Bali. <laughs> and because you somewhere, could. yeah, like a beach for sure. Um, somewhere with sunshine and I don't know, everywhere. Do a flyover. And no masks. Everywhere. I like it. Great. All right. Our next question. Let's see. Where are we at? From Kevin. What is your favorite memory from working on Aladdin? Hmm. I, would, I, I mean, I think Scott and I might have the same one. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I, were you going to say working with Robin? 
Yes, working with Robin Williams was a, was a dream come true. I was like a huge fan. Dead Poet Society was my ultimate favorite movie. Yeah, I couldn't even believe I was in the same room with them, much less working with them on something. So yeah, that was incredible, unforgettable. Yeah, so that was a question that I had. You got to work in a recording studio with Robin. Yeah. Yeah, so it's way different than how they do things today where it's uh, everyone's in a separate room and stuff. So well, you get, know the getting thing, to work I, with Robin. I feel like, you know, it, I, my theory about it is that, you know, he improvised a lot. So there was no way to just record him on his own and then just splice it all together. Yeah. You, know, you never knew what he was going to say, and then we had to change our reaction. So I think maybe that's yeah. why. But, uh, but it was a lucky break. They told me they had four hours of him alone. Oh, wow. Um, just, that, that's a lot of improv. Yeah, just doing his thing. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, I, you know since you're, you're talking like this, I wasn't working with him, but I, I'll just jump to like the, the third Aladdin. Uh, when uh, Dan Castellaneta came in and, and was Aladdin for a while. Uh, and, oh, you um, was the genie. Uh, the genie, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Aladdin genie. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, there's a line in there where he's <laughs> interviewing Rasul as a, a district attorney. He's the cross-examining him. And I used to, I always ad lib a lot for better or worse, and Robin only does. And so uh, they were t they were cracking up. They said, you know, Robin was reacting to your, your this and that. And he said, I will not be upstaged by a tertiary character. I'm very sorry. And he, <laughs> and he turned me into a lampshade and snapped me up. And they kept it in the movie. And I thought that was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> it's in the movie. That's awesome. So it was very cool. That is really cool. Oh, Lord. <laughs> we did both were able to be in the room with each other, and we also worked separately. Mm -hmm. And yes. we sometimes with nobody, just yeah. like line to line, yeah. readers, and sometimes you were just on your own. Mm -hmm. It was nice, but in the beginning is when I think we all met in the studio together, right? Yes. Like at the yes. very beginning. So you could kind of hear other people's voices and what they were going to kind of be doing or you know just get a sense of what was going on yeah further down the line and we were there was more solo stuff there would just be a list of lines or even words and fragments of words that you have yours or even sounds but in the beginning we were all there together it was really cool mm -hmm. jonathan do you have a favorite memory from working on aladdin besides just you know working with robin uh we well i was only in the studio with him probably once and i think that once and that once for sure and then the other time I passed him in the hallway. I was going into Studio B at the corner of Dopey Drive and Goofy Lane, and he was on his way out or something. And that was kind of it. I mean, the, the stuff that I have with him in the in the movie is actually a lot more than I have with the genie, because I'm doing the Broadway show now, too, is a lot more than I have with the genie in the Broadway mm -hmm. show. There were more. There was more stuff to do. So I did have, but I, I, only, I, I only have a recollection of one day in the studio with him. Um, and it was a great day. I, I, I kind of remember every day, though, to be honest, I hate to sound Pollyannish about it, but I had a great, great time. And um, every day was a lot of fun. And I worked for a long, I, I, I was on it for about a year and nine months for all different reasons that came and went and came and went, um, you know, uh, and, and getting to be in the studio with, with Gilbert was also a, a great challenge. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Because, uh, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're referring to. Can you be more specific? Yes, I can. <laughs> that means if there were more than the same thing with Robin Williams, if there were more than three people in the room, that yeah. constituted an audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Arm went the switch. So true. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine working with trying to work with either one of those two in keeping. A straight face the entire it's time. Very, that's the challenge because you know if you laugh, you ruin the take. Um, so I, you would see all the people in the booth behind six inches of glass crying and laughing, doubled <laughs> over, and they could just let loose. But I had to, you know, we all had to just do this. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. All right. Our next question uh, coming from Craig. Outside of Aladdin, who is your favorite Disney villain? Ooh, that's a good one. Mm. That is a good question. Um, Jonathan's an expert on villains. It's true. Well, I, I loved them since I was a kid. It's all I ever wanted to do. 
And I was a big fan of Hans Conried's, and he's the voice of Captain Hook. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, don't, I can't remember now. I, I used to know it. I can't remember things so well anymore. I remember the, I can't remember the name of um, the, the actor that played Stromboli. He was terrifying. Yes, he was. Just terrifying. Um, and, uh, but I, you know, I, I, I'm pretty much like a big fan of all the villains and villain, villainesses and always have been. They, I, they, they were very attractive to me from the very beginning. I think the first Disney villain that I saw was Peter Pan because I was born in 1950. So I, you know, that was the first, that was, that's what was around then was the first, the Peter Pan yeah. sometime around then. That's the first one I remember seeing. And I thought the study was terrific. Mm -hmm. Me too. You know who's a great villain? I just saw. Um, we just watched Tangled again for the first time in a while. Oh yeah, mom, she's fantastic. They have that mother Gothel. Mother she's Gothel. A, she's a great villain. She's a great, you know. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. there you Linda, go. do you have a a favorite outside of Jafar? A favorite Disney villain. I mean, Jafar is definitely my favorite. One time, Paige and I got in a conversation during a panel about why, who, who, her villain or my villain, who would win in a villain fight. And of course I chose Jafar. <laughs> she chose hers, but I still think Jafar would win in a <laughs> villain fight. Probably. Um, probably. Jafar's got, you know, sorcery, yeah. magic. He, he would cheat though, see. So. <laughs> he would cheat yeah. for sure. <laughs> Which makes him a better villain, if you think about it. Absolutely. That's right. I know. That's why I can't choose a villain better than you. But oh, yeah. um, I did really enjoy Ursula. Yeah. She's That's a great. fun villain. I loved her so much. So right. Ursula yeah. would definitely be up there for me. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Jim. Boy. Uh, well, really, Jonathan, he's way up there. I mean, he's in the pantheon. If you go to Disneyland, right behind the castle, there's a House of Villains, I believe it's called. And it's got all the villain swag. And there's, you know, Cruella de Vil. And, and she was a pretty good one, too, by yeah, the way. They're all, listen, they're all good. Oh, yeah. They, they really are. Always and, uh, a good villain. You don't have a good story. That's right. That's yeah. right. The hero is less heroic. Yeah. You have to, you yeah. Have to overcome yeah. a huge mountain. Yeah. To, to, to win. Otherwise, you know, he's an errand. The worse, the meaner okay. they are, the better the story is. You and betcha. And you, yeah. told, you always wanted to be a villain. You always wanted to play a Disney villain, right? I mean, oh. like, like a yeah. life dream. Yeah, right? Didn't you? It was, yeah, you know, always. Since I was sure. a I think that's so cool that you well, got. That was uninteresting to me. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, everybody. I'm I'm the I think we could have a, a six-minute panel for, just on Disney villains. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jim, look, I guess you know, always, Pete. Come on, look at look at them. First of all, they always have the best silhouettes. They always have the the best, the craziest clothes. Most of them have animals who can talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Hondo Onaka qualifies as a villain, but he's he's. I wouldn't want to play poker with him. No, but he does have the requisite lizard monkey on his yes. shoulder, so I got that going for me. <laughs> and uh, Pilf Muck Muck is his name, by the way. Please not flip Muck. Anyway, it's Pilf Muck Muck. And, uh, <laughs> people ask me that all the time, thinking I don't know it, but yes, it's Pilf. So there. So take that, internet. <laughs> take so. that. All right, our next question here is coming from Adrian. Is there a special way that you prepare for voiceover work? A lot of sit-ups, right? Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of crunches. <laughs> I, I drink a lot of water. That's all. That's my that's my secret. Is I just drink water all the time. And yeah. you got to get a good night's sleep. Right. It depends. Sure. You know what kind of session you're doing. So if you're doing an eight-hour day, or if you're doing a video game, which is usually a, a lot of vocal strain, mm -hmm. I I usually do a little bit of vocal rest before the day. So I won't go out in loud places or have long conversations with people for a couple of days leading up to it if it's going to be a long session. And, you know, we always have, I don't know about you guys, I always have throat coat tea. It's just yeah. mm -hmm. a miracle tea. So I, I always have that on hand. I, I just, you know, try to keep my instrument in, in good shape and not strain it. 
when I've got a big session coming up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. if you're a villain. <laughs> smoke. Yeah. <laughs> party all night. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you yeah, want I'm that the same no. I agree with Scott. You know, water is your friend. And uh, my little trick mm -hmm. is that I put about two or three Ricola cough drops inside the, the little avion or whatever it is oh, and oh, then shake man. it up. And it's kind of good. You know, and I, you know, you go to a football game or a concert, I'm the guy who's clapping and maybe I'll whistle, but I don't yell. Because you see these some people, man, I was at a Springsteen concert last night. <laughs> and they can't talk. And I said, yes, I hear that. Yeah, you know, and I was too. And I can still talk. Thank you. You know, so uh, you got to watch. It's, it's your, it's your axe, you know? Yeah. All right. Ready for more questions? All right. From Shaw. Is there a favorite piece of Aladdin memorabilia that you own? Hmm. I love my cookie jar. I have a, a genie cookie jar. That's fantastic. I had one. Mine broke. Oh, no. <laughs> that was so good. Did we get that at the MoMA event? Yeah. I feel like that was the MoMA cookie jar. When was first coming out, there was this very fancy event at the Museum of Modern Art. And I remember, I remember seeing Martin Scorsese there and having a heart attack. Wow. And anyway, but they gave us these uh, cookie jars, and I don't know how mine has survived. By all, there's no, there's no reason why it shouldn't have broken after all these years. But it's still <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. show, now that I'm a parent, right? You put it in, in case dad. it in lucite. Hmm? In case it in plastic that yeah, lucite. I, I, don't I, know know had one. I don't know if he got an extra one or if this was the same one, but he used to fill it up with nutter butters or something but now i don't use it as a good and now it's just on the shelf you know right nice I put it in loose sight <laughs> does anybody else have the genie doll that's kind of life-size from the torso up but the legs are like little doll size <laughs> does anybody else have that i have that i feel like i just no. a very big aladdin doll somewhere but i don't know Ooh. genie a or huge something. genie doll it's oh. at my mom's house but it's huge and i drove cross country with that genie doll in the back seat of my car. And I would take it in every time I would stop for the night at a hotel, I'd take it in to the room with me. Cause I thought it's not going to be here in the morning when I come out. Cause you, you couldn't really hide him. He, Linda, he was, was it big enough that you could put it in the passenger seat and go in the commuter lane and nobody would know? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> it looked the silhouette. I mean, maybe I mean, it needed a little boost, but the, the torso is huge. Did it scare you at all? Did you did you walk in on it unknowingly one time? Has it ever scared you? It hasn't scared me, but it did scare one of my little cousins once. Because my mom had it put away and and one of my little cousins walked in and was like, ah, but just for a minute. I like that Jasmine picture behind you. That's cool. That looks like a new yeah. That was painted by Paige. Scott, you you oh, missed it because yeah. you had to go home. I th oh, did you get one too? I didn't get one. I didn't, oh, wait, you know what? No, I didn't get one of those. No, maybe it was just the princesses. To the Jasmine, I, I got one of those from Disney character voices. Cool. We all were presented. I, it might have been a, just a princess panel. I thought it was the care. Oh, no, it was the Disney character voices panel, but Paige painted a picture of each princess. I think most of you know Paige O'Hara yeah. is um, a really fine talented. artist with Disney and, and great? so talented. And she made the most beautiful paintings and presented them, surprised us all at this live D23 event in 2019. I remember, that. I remember and that. This painting lives in another room in my apartment, but I bring it in for- I was so bummed. I had to um, leave. We was, I was supposed to go with you to that. And then I had, there was a family member health scare and I had to literally jump in my car and race away like a crazy yeah. person. Like, I gotta go. And then thank God everything turned out to be fine, but I didn't get the cool thing. I think it might've been a princess thing, but it was at the same event. So I, for a minute I thought maybe she had one for everyone, but I think she just had one. She specializes in the princesses. So yeah. And rightly so. I mean, I think maybe I'm, that's not entirely true because I've seen lots of pictures of the beast and, and other characters. I mean, I think she can do everything. Just you, but, Scott. She was just ignoring you. No. <laughs> I get for leaving. Hang in there. You'll get one. But she's super talented. It's I didn't even know until that T23 that she was an artist like that. I didn't realize that she was like yeah. a tremendous painter. Yeah. Absolutely. 
So, Jim, Jonathan, do you guys have any Aladdin memorabilia? Well, I stole the lamp. <laughs> I, I have the lamp on my mantle at home. So I guess you could say, yeah. <laughs> Wait, where did, where'd you get the lamp? Uh, at my imagination. I stole it from Scott. I, I, all right. I've, there. Now you know. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the lamp went. Yes. Now we know. Doesn't work. Uncovered Please. here at Galaxy Con. Yeah, yeah that's right. Ja Pool Jafar merchandise. Yeah, there's a, a ton of it. Um, I don't really. I'm not a big collector at this point in my life. I'm at the divesting point in my life, so I've been giving a lot of it away. I gave stuff away to people in the show I was doing on opening night, and we got these genie watches at some opening. I think maybe in uh, California. Oh. Yeah, I love that. I gave that to, gave that to James Monroe Aguilar opening night in Manhattan. Oh, cool. I think um, the, the stuff that I have that I really cherish is uh, drawings from Andreas Deja, who was the principal animator for Jafar. And I have a couple really great, great uh, drawings and paintings from Andreas and also from Nick Ranieri. Do you remember Rick, Nick? Wonderful, also a wonderful animator. And he was one of the animators on uh, on Jafar in that movie, too. Um, uh, yeah, I have that stuff. And that's the stuff I really love. I have some old drawings, too. You know, there were drawings, um, a lot of drawings of Jafar, like about 15 different versions of Jafar before Andreas came, you know, took it over, I guess that were submitted by all these other wonderful artists at Disney. And um, I have a couple of those too. And those are really interesting because it's not, it's not what we know. It's not the Jafar that we know. They're pre, pre Jafar. Oh, really? Is he golfing or anything? I mean, is he, you know, <laughs> like that. No, you know what it is, is it's the opposite. It's a, Instead of instead of being sort of tall and thin and slimy, there's one where he's very short and very fat and smelly, and there, there's you know with like <laughs> bugs flying around him, and uh, there's just different versions, you know, everything in between those two. Um, Danny DeVito Jafar, that's very rare, very rare. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next question is coming from Brian. What is your favorite song from Aladdin? Hmm. Boy. Well, I definitely like A Whole New World is a great song. Yeah, me too. But me that's, too. That's, that's, that's mine, for sure. I usually I say A Whole New World, stuff. but Friend Like Me popped into my head this time right. when the question was asked. So today, I would I'd love to hear friend like me oh yeah yep actually i'm changing mine i, I agree <laughs> I, i'm not with that. if name another one i'll like that one too <laughs> <laughs> I like, uh, what's that prince ali i have friends who uh, when they see me we haven't seen each other in a while they'll see me and go prince ali as yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> that's, my that's not bad that's pretty good absolutely aladdin has, aladdin has a great great soundtrack so it's, yeah i don't it's I understand why it would be hard to choose from uh, from the favorites. I understand they made it. They did a remake of Aladdin. That's what I heard. I <laughs> yeah, have, so I a have, little rumor. It's. Uh, I understand it's not as good as ours, though. So I'm just. <laughs> that's what I heard. Now, I'm sure the fans will verify that. <laughs> <laughs> if I made you guys watch the remake, by the way. Yeah, I, you know what? I took my son to the premiere. We had a lot of fun. It was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan and I saw it together in New York. We went to a special screening together. That was oh, fun. Nice. That's great. Yeah, All I right. think Will Smith deserves a medal for <laughs> taking on that role for just yeah, you know true. taking a swing at it. Like wow, yeah. absolutely. All right, our next question here. Let's see from Yeo. Please don't shoot the messenger if I'm uh, mispronouncing. But what about your character? Do you identify with the most? That's a great question. I, it is a great question. I really great love that question. question. I want to think about it for a minute. Yeah, me too. Hmm. 
Well, Jonathan is pure evil, so I'm sure that's... I can answer that. Everything. <laughs> Everything about Jafar I identify with. Uh, I don't identify with him, but I really love everything about him. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think it's great because they I, they actually, you know, for Rasul, uh, they asked me to, you know, don a costume, do a vest, and then they threw me. Exact, my shoulders, my arms, my they're all that big. It's a, it's like freaky. It's like seeing me there with, you know, a little <laughs> mustache and stuff. And I might Did be making this up. movie. <laughs> 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 You know, I was, well, no, I was going to say, I lived in Florida, like I couldn't have been further away from like Hollywood. I actually lived in Hollywood, Florida, which is very far away from Hollywood, California. And so like, I never, I used to like dream about trying to get into movies or being on a TV show, you know, and, you know, maybe the way Aladdin looks at the palace, like it's something that he'll never get inside of. I think for, I think that that's maybe the what I relate to the most, you know, it felt like some crazy dream coming true that I was able to come all the way out to California and, you know, accomplish some, some of the things that I had been dreaming about when I was really little. Hmm. That's great. Yeah. Um, Linda, all right. We're on you now. Yes. Okay. I mean, so much of, of the character, like Jonathan was saying, you know, they, we lived with these characters for so long that they, they really become a part of the fabric of, your life um initially when when i read the scenes that jasmine had i think what i i really connected with the most was there was a certain courage that jasmine had and and a refusal to be identified by other people she really was out to create her own identity and and to be free of the restrictions that she was born into. So this was something that I personally identified with with her and and I really felt like her heart connected with me on the page the first time I read it and continued to go that way through all of the incarnations of this character that I got to be a part of. That's beautiful. Do you feel like that made it easier for you to to read and as you're feeling it instead of just reading it? I felt like I could disappear into this character. And and for me as an actress, this was something that I I loved being in a recording studio more than anything else. I liked it better than being on camera. I liked it better than being on stage. Even though I had wonderful experiences in film and television and theater nothing made me feel freer than being in a recording studio with big thick walls and a heavy door. I I felt like that was where I could disappear into my imagination and become anything. Wow. Amazing. That's, cool. That's pretty good. We have time for one, <laughs> one more question. Uh, let's see if we can get one more quick question uh, from Rachel. Scott, is that the ship from Fuller House on your bookshelf? Yes, very good. <laughs> I, I don't know how that wound up in my bag on the final tape night of the show. No, but, you know, I, I the last night people were, you know, we were sad that the show was ending. I mean, we had, you know, it was our second time on the set and we had, you know, in, in our lifetimes. And we were there, we got to do another five seasons of the show. And, you know, to be honest, there was another thing I wanted to take from the set that somebody else got, which was there was a, a cookie jar in the shape of the, the San Francisco, the full house house in the kitchen. And I had my eyes on that. But when I went to borrow it forever, it was already gone. But then I ended up with the, uh, the, 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 the ship in my dressing room and it came home. With me. So but for the record, if Warner Brothers needs it, they can always have it back. I'm just borrowing it for the rest of my life. That's right. You're the guardian. Of I'm the, the ship. guardian. I'm the steward. What side is it on? Is it right the steward of the ship. Just there. You go. <laughs> and that's gonna be our time for today. But before we go, um, Linda, do you happen to know anybody who may have had a birthday recently? Oh my gosh! Is this me? This is, is me you. that you're talking about. Okay. 
So that is only Linda Larkin would ask birthday. that, by the way. <laughs> right, because it's not my birthday. It's my bonus birthday. For some reason on the internet, it says what? my birthday is March 20th. Yes. I every year get birthday messages on March 20th. I don't know why that is out there, but it is. And honestly, I enjoy it. I'm so happy. Even some friends of mine forget that that's not my real birthday and wish me a happy birthday on March 20th. So yesterday I was texting with people. I was like, oh, it's my big birthday. Bonus Today. birthday. Bonus birthday. Everybody so, should have thank a bonus you for the birthday wishes. It's not my actual birthday. My actual birthday is in July. So I've got a in few July. more months before okay. I So this is ages. rule number one. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. Yes. That's right. Yes. And don't yes. believe everything you think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you for the birthday wishes. <laughs> so before we wrap up, any last comments, words for our fans? Scott? Well, thanks for coming to this. is really a cool experience. This has been a very weird year of my life and all of our lives. And, um, I, you know, I think this is great that we get to get together like this um, in a virtual way. And I'm not wearing any shoes, which makes it even. <laughs> Me neither. So, but I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining us today because it's a really fun opportunity for us. He's probably also not wearing any pants, but he didn't mention that, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Jim, are you Only projecting? Shoes. What's that? I said, are you projecting onto Scott? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Is that okay? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> Jim, you have any last words for our fans? Well, thanks for inviting me out to play. I'm, as Robin Williams said, I'm a tertiary character, so I'm just glad to be here. And I, I, I know Linda and I know Scott, but it's good to meet you, Jonathan. Almost. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, be well. Godspeed. Break a leg. Thank you, Jonathan. Any last words? Uh, no, no, just the same. I'm, it is very unusual to be doing this like this, but I'm happy to be doing it with all of you, of course. And um, I am wearing shoes, and they're long, pointed, red and black, beautiful, beautifully handcrafted Arabian shoes that I'm sure everyone's going to be jealous of and want. want. <laughs> just thought of you. Linda, I, I just else? want to say thank you to all the GalaxyCon fans. We have a special place in our heart for GalaxyCon fans because yes. that was our last live event back in Richmond. Yeah. And we, oh, there's my bag. Thank you. Happy Thanks birthday. for the happy birthday, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. That's so crazy. Um, I know. Happy, happy not Linda's birthday. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> but that was fun. Um, we, that was the last time we were all together was at GalaxyCon. In the, basically, I think I flew home on March 1st, and I haven't flown anywhere since. <laughs> <laughs> and it was an incredible event. That was that was something, yeah. too, that, you know, as our last event, before they were canceled for the next year, yeah. we were so blessed to have that time together and yeah. to have the energy of the fans because people did – we were starting to understand even at that point that something was going on mm -hmm. and that, you know, the world was changing and, and really the energy of the galaxy con fans carried us through that weekend and yeah. has carried me through this year. This is my third event with galaxy con this year. And yeah. it's, it's been something that I've looked forward to every time and has really lifted my spirits at important times in the last year. So thank you, all of you. Thank you. And thank all of you guys for being here and, and hanging out together virtually on our virtual stage, if you will. And thank you all for watching at home or wherever you are. Thank you for all your great questions. And I hope that we get to do this again in person. So until yeah. next time, please be safe and hopefully we will see you soon.